What's going on, y'all? KM Best here. I am back in the top 10 with Fastos. So why am I still so ambivalent on this card? Many Marvel Snap players ask the question, Fastos, is he Astos or a Blastos? I am here to tell you that he's somewhere in the middle, something that we don't have good wordplay for just yet. Midstos doesn't really have much of a ring to it. So I played about 80 games of Fastos in High Infinite. I tried him in a couple of different places. Surfer and Thanos were the main ones. I came away from it fairly confident that he can go in Surfer and fairly confident that he does not move the needle in Thanos. Fastos is a three cost, three power card with an on reveal ability that gives the cards remaining in your deck when you play him either minus one cost or plus two power. A Silver Surfer deck manages to make good use of this thanks to the fact that they have Hope Summers, the ability to get to eight energy on the final turn of the game, gives them the potential to play a two cost three drop, things of that nature, and of course being a deck that generally does have cards that benefit from getting a buff. However, in other lists, I found basically nothing promising. The Thanos list actually legitimately ruined my day. I tried it. It was very bad. I, I do not recommend trying anything like it. I have seen various people playing a Jane Foster list where the idea is to discount your one drops into being zero drops, play Jane Foster, draw a bunch of them. To me, this feels like it actually makes the deck a little less consistent. One of the issues that the Jane Foster decks can have already is if you don't have a two drop, you're very much playing Thor into Beta Ray Bill into Jane, and you're kind of running the risk of your hand being too full to draw all of your zeros. And when Fastos is in the deck, that kind of gets exacerbated because suddenly you're drawing a Rocket Raccoon instead of your Mjolnir. It's not the end of the world, but I do think it's not a worthwhile addition to an archetype like that. So let's talk about the archetype that I actually had a lot of success with, Silver Surfer with Fastos. Many Marvel Snap content creators ask the question of their audiences, did you know Fastos costs three? It's honestly such a meme at this point for people to see a three cost card come out and be like, that goes in Silver Surfer because it's just like such a baseline like, oh, level one analysis. Congratulations on informing me that the card that is coming out costs three and is therefore playable with the card that synergizes with cards that cost three. So I do expect some vitriol in the comments for that. I am not uh, unaware of the potential there. The thing about Fastos in this deck is he is not your plan A, which is Brood Abs, and he is very unlikely to be your plan B, which is Hope Summer's several question marks Surfer Abs. And so you end up with him being your plan C or melding with your plan B. One of the things that I noticed was I could play a Fastos on three, then a Hope Summers on four. And if Fastos reduced the cost of any of my three drops that I drew, I would then be able to do something like play a two cost three drop on the Hope Summers lane alongside a normal cost three drop, usually like a Nocturne, hopefully. And that would give me eight energy on the final turn of the game, which would enable me to like weave in other things. Maybe I got another discounted card. Maybe I have a Mockingbird that's pretty cheap. Maybe I'm gonna make sure I get my Nova out before Killmongering. He does sort of fit into that mold. Here's the issue. Silver Surfer has a ton of really good cards that you could be running instead of Fastos here. You could be running an extra two drop, like Cable or something, just to have a card that maybe discounts your Mockingbird and is a two drop, so you curve out a little bit better. You could be running an extra tech card, like Rogue. You could be running a big body, like Sebastian Shaw or Gladiator. And at, at the same time as I am making this video, I would not be surprised if it ended up being true that the best version of Silver Surfer does end up using Fastos at some point in the future. But I would be very surprised if it was ever like, oh, you can't play this deck without Fastos. I think he ends up being so eminently replaceable, even in what is a good deck for him, that I find it hard to argue that you should actually pick him up. I'm not saying he's the world's most unplayable card, what I am saying is he feels fairly replaceable in the one shell I think is actually good right now. 
Now, what that means for you is you're going to want to keep an eye on various opportunities that will come up to make sure that I'm right about this. You don't want to trust my day one evaluation with carte blanche. You want to check my day one evaluation, the priors that I'm telling you right now, and see if they change by the time this card ends up rotating off of the caches. I know a lot of people are very high on Fastos Arishem. I have no opinion on that because I haven't played those two cards together because Arishem isn't out right now. Based on his performance in other lists, I don't think he makes a ton of sense there, but that's about as far as I'm willing to go because I just don't want people to be mad at me. Now, as far as this deck, he is very much card number 12, but this is actually just a really strong deck. So I'm going to do a card-by-card -card breakdown for those of you that are very excited about Fastos or for those of you that bought it and want to actually run it in a good deck. This is actually a good deck and it does run Fastos, but it's not good enough that I would recommend that you buy him and he's so replaceable that I would again recommend against purchasing him at the moment. Nova is a classic inclusion in basically every Silver Surfer deck. One thing I do have as a play tip for you is do not play this guy on turn one or turn two. You are almost always going to be able to fit him in on turn four or five. And it's actually very crucial because a lot of the time he's pretty key to your Hope Summers game plans and making sure you have this card available for when you want to play Hope Summers is actually quite important. Now, with Fastos in there, that math does get a little bit fuzzy because sometimes those turns get filled up with maybe some Fastos discounted cards. But generally, that is still the heuristic that I am adhering to. I don't really want to be playing this guy out unless I'm getting the Hope Summers value or it's like late in the game and I'm not really going to be doing anything else with that energy. You are almost always able to fit him in on four or five. Please don't give up the potential for getting an energy on Hope Summers by just running him out there because you feel bad not playing a card in the first two turns of the game. The nut draw in this deck is Forge into Brood into Absorbing Man. That's really, really strong. Forge is not a card you need to like hold to make sure that happens. Like if you're Brood and if you have Brood abs in hand, you Forge on two and they like Iceman your Brood, I would think about holding in situations like that. But in a situation where you don't have all the pieces together and you're like, oh, what if I top deck it? I typically just default to like getting a card on the board rather than like going for the super high roll. I, again, don't know if this is correct, but I personally believe that it is in most situations. Forge is an excellent two drop. I know there are people who just don't really get this deck or don't really enjoy how it plays because you skip turn one and you skip turn two so often. But the upside of that is you are able to really make that back on the back end. And of course, if you are playing Forge Brood Abs, it's extremely powerful. That is a snap condition in most matchups. And sometimes you'll get punished because you'll run into a matchup where they're like, I don't know, playing a Wong combo that you can't really interact with in a meaningful way or playing Living Tribunal or Hella or something like that. You can get punished by that, but... It is just such a baseline powerful thing that it is your level one snap condition. And then you should assume that you're snapping that and then think a little bit more about what is my opponent playing? What can I lose to here? And then start modifying that heuristic as necessary. I don't think any Silver Surfer deck would exist without Brood. Brood is a phenomenally powerful card, carrying buffs from both Fastos and Forge, allowing you to spread wide into Silver Surfer, and of course, getting Absorbing Man for insane value. In this build, Brood is even more important, if you can believe it, because we're using Brood and Absorbing Man to discount our Mockingbird. This is part of why Brood Abs is such a snap condition, because it's not just the best points that you can possibly create, it's also what snowballs you into a very powerful endgame with Mockingbird. I strongly suspect that I shouldn't have to explain to you what Silver Surfer is doing in the Silver Surfer deck. If you are confused about that, please take a few moments and read the card Silver Surfer. I will wait. We all good? Killmonger is part of why I view this deck as fairly well positioned into the metagame because of just how powerful this card is in matchups against Zoo, but even in just other matchups that like seem to occasionally matter. This will sometimes kill off a Kitty Pride. You can set up situations against Destroy where they're forced to leave the Deadpool down or you throw priority on the final turn of the game and it kills off a big Deadpool that they've been investing into. 
It's a genuinely powerful card. Of course, it also combines with our Nova in order to create some excellent power plays when we have a lot of bodies on the board. A good offensive and defensive tech card. It advances our game plan with Nova and prevents us from getting run over by decks like Zoo, which output more points than we do. Another reason why I feel this deck is well positioned right now is the inclusion of Mobius and Mobius, and that's not just because there's a bunch of people playing Fastos and he's kind of good against that. Mobius is your best weapon against the Ravona deck. This is your most important card in a matchup that is very heavily reliant for them on discounts. Their job is big Sasquatch, big Mockingbird, and so this actually means that the most dangerous card for you to see in that matchup is an early Mysterio. Because if they can play an early Mysterio, they can get at least one of Sasquatch or Mockingbird down before you get Mobius onto the board. That is one of the big things you're going to want to look for in that matchup. And other than that, Mobius is absolutely phenomenal the less your opponent knows how to play into it. Good players will be focusing on the Mysterio stuff, I don't think that's really percolated down the ladder just yet. Fastos, Fastos, Fastos. He's not Astos, he's not a Blastos, but he might be Mayhapstos. And I think that this card is very easily card number 12 here. Replace it with Shaw, replace it with, uh, you know, Gladiator, replace it with Rogue, replace it with a two drop, replace it with whatever you really want if you're looking at this and you're like, I'm not buying this card for this deck. Valid thing to think, plenty of replacements deck is still absolutely very good. Now, as far as what he does do, the major things I noticed were he was your plan C and he mixed well into your plan B. As a plan C, like there were games that I won because of Fastos Absorbing Man or something when I just wasn't doing anything else. There were games where like I doubled his effect on a Kamartaj or a Sinister London. He was very powerful in that. There are games where his high rolls are actually apparent in the deck. And so I think this is a good shell for him because it covers up for his weaknesses. This is already a very good deck, and he doesn't really have to do a lot. Sometimes you get your little surprise snaps off where you have like a final turn surfer absorbing man because one of them got discounted by Fastos, and that's like kind of impossible for your opponent to expect, and that's a very valuable thing to do. Now you end up doing that it's, it's again, like, he's not amazing, but he fits here fairly well. We talked already about how he fits into the Fastos on three, Hope Summer's on four, discounted card, plus another three drop on five, and then suddenly you're really looking at a lot of energy cheat in a game. And it's not an impossible situation to find yourself in. I feel like it happened a decent amount of the time for me. It's not necessarily reliable, but there are a lot of games where you don't have Brood or Absorbing Man, and you're sitting there spinning your wheels. And he's really genuinely pretty okay in those games. And I realize that pretty okay is not a ringing endorsement, and it is not intended to be. Red Guardian is another fairly replaceable card. Every card we talked about, Fastos being replaced with, can also replace Red Guardian. I opted for a very interaction-heavy build of Surfer. I felt like that would be what I wanted to play. I wanted to have as much agency as I possibly could. Red Guardian, though, is not very well positioned right now. There's a lot of Squirrel Girls running around that make it hard for you to hit the targets you actually want to hit, like Kyera or Blue Marvel. There's a lot of Mysterios running around that make it hard for you to hit something like an Iron Man or an Angela, what have you. He's still good, but he's a little bit worse than I would expect him to be in an average metagame, because right now there are so many ways that he just like randomly ends up blanked. One thing with Mysterio though, if you can turn off, if you guess where the right Mysterio is, it will not transform. So that is effectively a very big swing. It's just very, you know, fairly unlikely that you end up doing that. It does come up some of the time though. The real thing is just that there's so many decks that spread wide enough with small units that he ends up not being as valuable as he was in a metagame, say, where people were playing like Blink decks and it was just like, oh, I read Guardian that it doesn't happen anymore, right? He's not as good as he used to be, but I do think he still is worth the inclusion. If you want to make a change for more power with Char Gladiator or a different kind of tech with Rogue, I'm not going to get mad at you.
Hope Summers is your plan B. Uh, Fastos, again, like, he's pretty close to her in terms of how you want to use her, and he can be a plan B of his own, but he's really more of a plan C that works with your plan B. Hope into several question marks into being able to play Surfer Abs Man on the final turn of the game is your real plan B. Like, that is extremely powerful. Being able to hope on three in the games where you're not Brood Abs Manning is kind of the only reason this is a deck. Because if it was just Brood Abs Man, I don't think it would have the consistency. But your backup plan is genuinely powerful, and you are able to do a variety of weird and unexpected things with the amount of energy cheat that you have from Fastos and Hope, and the amount of weird stuff you just have in your deck. There's a lot of just weird, awkward tech cards, like you could repeat a Red Guardian. Is that ever really good? It can be, it might not always be. You have Mockingbirds running around. Is that ever good? Some of the time it's really good. And I think that like generally this deck leverages confusion fairly well and Hope is a pretty big part of that. Nocturne is filling a fairly valuable role in this deck. As a deck that spreads pretty wide pretty quickly, you have a natural weakness to Limbo decks and so you really need something that is actually going to answer that. Nocturne is legitimately kind of a godsend in a deck like this because A, giant body at 3-5. B, goes on Hope Summers and then leaves a Hope Summers so you get the energy without having to super commit to the lane. C, you end up in a bunch of situations where your locations can really screw you. Things like Crimson Cosmos, you're not very good at that, obviously. You're a pretty bad Nexus or Baxter building deck a lot of the time as well. You're a terrible Limbo deck. I actually feel like Silver Surfer is genuinely one of the decks that gets more screwed by locations than most other decks. And I think that this card bailing you out is actually pretty crucial to the deck functioning at a very high level. You can replace her, but it's very hard to find the full package that she provides being a three cost mover and solving for all of this stuff and having a great body. Absorbing Man is mostly here to copy Brood. And when he's not here to copy Brood, he's mostly here to copy Silver Surfer. And when he's not copying Silver Surfer, he's mostly bad. That's sort of the hierarchy of Absorbing Man here. He's doing one of those two things. And if he's not doing one of those two things, he's probably pretty ass. Like you're not really getting a lot out of a second Killmonger most of the time, you know? It can happen, it's exceedingly rare, but it actually can happen where you like Killmonger and they're like, haha, it's gonna be fine, and then you Killmonger again. Again, not likely, but possible. Most of what this card should be doing is giant broods and or multiple silver surfers. Mockingbird is part of why you should feel comfortable snapping brood abs. Obviously, it's a very powerful thing on its own, but it's extremely even more powerful when your Mockingbird is going to be discounted to one when you do your best thing. This deck rolls downhill extremely powerfully in matchups against other decks that rely on points. You absolutely start rolling downhill with brood abs, and then you finish rolling downhill with a very cheap Mockingbird. Is she strictly necessary for the deck's functioning? I personally don't believe so. When I talk about her and when I play her, it can feel like she's a little bit of a win more. You're probably winning those games anyway. But right now, there are decks in the metagame that can challenge Brood Abs, but find it a little bit harder to challenge Brood Abs and a Mockingbird. These tend to be other decks playing Mockingbird. There's a lot of things that cheat in this current iteration of Marvel Snap. So what that means is that I do think she's required right now, but I don't think that's necessarily a permanent state of affairs. She is very much a card that rolls downhill, and I do understand why people might not be interested in that, but right now I think it is a little bit non-negotiable. All right, y'all, thank you so much for watching through that video. I will have some gameplay uh, ready for you. I don't expect you to see a lot of fast <laughs> Like, again, he's so much like a plan B, plan C kind of thing. A lot of what you're going to get is just normal Silver Surfer gameplay, which, to be fair, I do think Silver Surfer is like one of the five best decks in the game right now. It's an actual top tier, well positioned deck. The highest of like what I would call the B plus tier is what Silver Surfer is. I think this deck is legitimately very good, but please take the gameplay for what it's meant to be, which is a showcase of the deck rather than necessarily a showcase of Fastos himself. I'll put some good Fastos games on there. It's not like they don't exist. 
Just, I don't want to read a bunch of comments that are like, oh, there's like three good Fastos games on here and the rest is just normal Silver Surfer because it's like, yeah, like that's sort of what his role in the deck is, is to be like a secondary game plan rather than a primary. You're always going to play Brood Abs over playing Fastos on three. That's not even really a question. And so you end up in these situations where he sits in hand, but when you don't have that stuff, he can be pretty good. As always, I've been Cam Best. You have been phenomenal, and I will see you in the next one. Gym only real. We doing gambas? We could do some gambas. I could see I could see gambas happening in a in an event like that. I suspect I will want that Nocturne out there. But I'm not sure if I want a Fastos, Hope, or Nocturne right now. I think I am going to Fastos, Hope on four, and then if I draw anything that gets playable with Hope, I have double procs into uh, one of the cards being able to move as well. Marvel Snaps, hottest location. The beach that makes you old. Wow. M. Night Shyamalan, really cooked. So we have, like, any number of plausibly okay draws. Just Sajin for six. All right. Mobius for two. Rude for four. Not a bad rip. I feel like it's probably this. No. Got to get rid of that, I think. Also fine. We end up in a tiebreaker here, I think. I suspect this is a tiebreaker, and I suspect we win it by one point. He lets you play your bad. Like, when you have a Silver Surfer lane, he lets you do your bad shit. Fastos or Arsham? I have no idea. Probably Arsham, he's cooler. Zero Ebony Mall. I love that for you. I really do. What an interesting hope, Summers. They snap me. 
Uh, is it just that they have a Shuri? Can I beat a Shuri? I kind of just want to try to beat a Shuri, whether or not I actually can. I don't really know that I can. In fact, I strongly doubt that I can. With RG, how would RG fix Shuri? And then next turn I can go Surfer Abs Man. It probably doesn't work, but I'm kind of interested. So if they have a Taskmaster, I actually can win, correct? Surfer Abs Man. This gives us one, two, three, four. So this surfer, first surfer is a four. I literally have no idea. I'm just going to die, I think. Let's see what happens. I think that one kills me. Wait. Uh, we go to a tiebreaker, and I think I win it. I'm pretty... Oh, I just win the game. Holy fuck. Longer. Then I could have just drawn it. That wasn't a bluff snap. That's like a semi-bluff snap. I'm probably winning that game. That's just like a, I'm doing really strong shit and I'm in a favored matchup, snap. Am I playing Astos here? Yeesh. Behold, Astos. See, like, haha, <laughs> the Astos mirror. Oh, that forge is kind of sick, right? We can go Hope Forge now. That's kind of cool. Ah. Hell yeah, brother. It's a good thing I don't have any fucking decreases in cost anymore. Straight up don't have any of those. Check out my stats, Stos, I guess. Snape. What is this? Seven. It's like they could have my M bird, right? Or their Embered. Ah, ugh. 
I don't love snaping this. Oh, holy shit. They're so fucked. That is the most fucked anyone has ever been. They're about to get Giga Blasted. Nocturne absolutely Omega shitting on everything right now. We should have snaped. What if we, like, literally just run a two-drop in here? You know what I mean? What if we just play a two-drop? How desperate am I to make this happen? Bastos magic. Bastos magic. They snap me. What's happening right now? What's happening right now? I'm scared shitless is what's happening right now. But I'm snapping back. Let's do it. Feel like I'm gonna die. I, I lose, correct? Oh no, I, I win. I add 16. Right, I win. I lose. I was doing the math wrong. I thought I added 12 on the right, which would have lost, but 16 on the right wins. I also longer. Then I could have just drawn it. That wasn't a bluff snap. That's like a semi-bluff snap. I'm probably winning that game. That's just like a 
I'm doing really strong shit, and I'm in a favored matchup. Snap. Am I playing Astos here? Yeesh. Behold, Astos. See, like... Haha! <laughs> the Astos Mirror! Oh, that Forge is kind of sick, right? We can go Hope Forge now. That's kind of cool. Ah! <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. It's a good thing I don't have any fucking decreases in cost anymore. Straight up don't have any of those. Check out my stats, Stos, I guess. Snape? What is this, seven? It's like, they could have my M-Bird, right? Or their M-Bird? Ah, ugh. I don't love Snaping this. Oh, holy shit. They're so fucked. That is the most fucked anyone has ever been. They're about to get Giga Blasted. Nocturne absolutely Omega shitting on everything right now. All right, we got we got Astos. Fastos and Sheiks? That has nothing to do with Fastos. That's just what it's like when you're really high rank, unfortunately. We get Killmonger, we both get one, I'm assuming. Oh, why is there a Fastos in there? What is that? Ah, no. Fucking shit. Fucking shit. That's all awful. Holy fuck. Literally rigged. What do I even do? I feel like I have to hold this Mockingbird Forge or something, or maybe I just like play Forge Killmonger and cry.
fog middle or something. I don't know. Uh, does their Zola just win the middle now? I actually just don't know. Or they're null. How big is null? Near 30. How is it near 30? How the fuck is it near 30? One Hulk died. One Hulk died, uh, six Hulks, 20. So it's like, Yes, I got the read, baby! They had to put the Deadpool there if they wanted it to happen. Let's fucking go. Genius. They had to put the Deadpool in the middle if they wanted it to flip. That's a Nico Minoru? What are you? Yo, wait, that blink is... Wait, is that blink fucked? That blink just turns any card into either Absorbing Man or Mockingbird. Ooh. 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 Okay, check it, right? We go Nova Fastos. And then we flip the Fastos into Absorbing Man on a Blink or Mockingbird, right? Asmin, Asmin won't do anything, but it's just bigger card, right? Like, decent chance of just a Mockingbird popping out of this. How fat is Fasto's ass? Worth getting. Ugh. In your financial situation? Probably not. Ooh, there she is. Ooh, there she is. There's our girl. Holy fuck. Holy mother of fuck. Okay. One, two. Three. One. Two. Three? We just have to rock after the Killmonger.
Boy, that would be relevant. No longer mid. I was thinking about the potential for a demon to go on the left. But now if it's demon middle, we lose to... Oh, okay. Demon left is the one I was playing around here. And that's why we did this stuff in this order. If there Was there an order where Silver Surfer also played around that? What's your Harry Potter house? My Harry Potter house is fuck turfs. Popular house lately? Yeah. It's unfortunate that it, it ends up having to be, isn't it? Not Tim Phillips keeps asking me about historical fascists. I don't know how to feel about that. Very snappable. Are we sure about this? Yeah, double Iron Man's pretty scary. How's a Monarch of Fascist Pro? I don't really think I have the bandwidth to deal with this today, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to time you out. I'm very tired today. Am I meant to turn off this location here? I'm gonna. Hey, yo. Wait, everything sucks? Everything sucks, Dose? Everything is booty ass, Dose? Holy shit. Everything is trash, Dose? Did we just hold here? What the fuck? So what's the move here? This is such an awkward game. Because, like, if they move the Nocturne into the middle, we die. RG takes out Iron Man. We can't play it there. We're doing this. The question is, are we doing this? Hawk is... How many is Hawk? Hawk plus Kitty? Okay, we got at least one of these reads roughly correct. There we go. There we go. 
Contractually obligated to ask how good Fastos is 15 minutes in a stream. We've played him one time. He was kind of okay. Uh, based on the emote at the beginning and then the exact perfect play around my stuff because they had the turn five, right? They knew what it was on turn five. So it does occur to me, but who knows? Maybe I'm just being salty. Distinctly possible. Whoa, they snapped me. That's crazy. What are they snapping me about? Thanos snapping me. That seems fine to me. I think I died. Wait a minute, no, I just win. All right, instead of dying, I literally just win by playing cards. Cool. I'm playing this Loki. Playing the Loki now, or am I nocturning first? I think I'm nocturning first.
Cool 15, dude. In case I get their Sasquatch, do I play the Swarm? Nah, I think I'm fine. Can't win the middle, correct? Knock left. Sure. Okay, but if it turns into nowhere, I'm banning you. Left, you did right? Oh, it's never knock, knock right. It's never knock left. We're attempting to juggernaut all their shit to that lane. We want it to be bad. Good thing she was first. Can't move anything, buddy. Zero, that's a number. However, it's not a big enough number. Sucks. Give me a two drop. I'm gonna start running cable in here like a fucking idiot would. So they can't clear. Gonna make a Fastos vid tonight? Yes. That is happening. Good rolls. They also got good rolls, which sucks for me. That is fascinating. Mine's a little bigger.
Ooh, that's not good. Ooh. It's good enough, though. It's good enough, though. I think that was an opponent who knew what... Ah, maybe they weren't. Who knows? Anyway, we got there. We got there. It's all good. Cosmo's very scary. But yeah, I sort of looked at it and I was like... Like, I'm not saying he's not bad. But we're almost never turning down brood abs. That's like the thing this deck does well. Like, in any game where brood, where stats on the board are important, Brood Abs is our best possible thing to do. With the exception of Forge Brood Abs. What do you know? Okay. I mean, I'm imagining we just instantly lose the middle and it's entirely a question of every other lane. How is Pastos overall? Kind of a pass. Yeah, I can't disagree with that. Can't disagree with that. Need 13, right? Am I meant to do this instead? Yeah, we do win right with KM. Vibranium was stupid, huh? The Vibranium was fucking stupid, huh? The real thing I was afraid of was like some sort of Cosmo thing. I don't know. I don't think we can die. Not enough. Very close. Oh. 